I'm Sir Jackman, and welcome back to Copy Kitty. So, uh, a couple of people have mentioned about the effects. I think I'm gonna, just for once, for one video, I'll turn the effects down to the minimum level. And we'll see how that looks. I, uh, personally, I actually kind of enjoy it. The, uh, the franticness of it all. But, uh, just to see. Oh, um, you can make custom levels. But let's, let's take a quick look at that. I'm not one to tend to make, you know, the uh, custom level stuff. So Pokey goes there. You gotta make your, oh, you make your terrain by uh, vectors. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. It's hard mode. Oh, you can directly make a hard mode level. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, what else do we got? Type polygon. Rectangle. Freehand. Sorry, freehand. Oh. Yeah, you can make like a little spooky boop here. That's okay, not connected. Uh, yeah, hey, create land. I don't know how this one works. Oop! Redo. Oh, there's undo and redo! Oh, that's cool. Uh, create land. Level too. Firm size, different So you can make a level about as big as the you know the ones in the main game. Then that's well, that makes sense, but that's yeah, pretty cool. Um, you can just this one enemy needs to be target. I mean, how do we put enemies in? Terrain editing info. Name. Oh, you can name it. Give a. Oh, that's pretty cool. Target damage. Starting weapons. Environment. Object placement. Graphics options. Oh, cool. So this is pretty fully featured. I, I don't tend to do these sort of things, like I said, but if you want to make your own levels, yeah, that looks pretty powerful. Alright. Sorry, I'm having, like, allergies or a cold. Probably, <laughs> probably just the allergies. But, uh... I'm trying to make it work. Light inside me is broken. Nice. I really hate just being sick on the weekends. It's like, that, that tends to be when I do my, uh, my video stuff. It's when I want to relax. I can't exactly call in sick. You know, my hobby is like, you know, video games. So. It's just annoying on that. Buzz Light users are annoying. Oh my gosh, they. They make something very, very similar to the Mega Man Death Sound. With the visual effect of match. Oh, I'm out of. Oh, crap. I keep forgetting. Oh, it's only a force. I don't know how much stronger force even is than uh, Bokey's thing. Like the Bokey beat. Well, we're fine. I guess he's chilled out on the story as a power. It's probably just at the end of the areas. Now, oh, yeah, we're still getting. Not recommend, to be honest. Oh, cool, when you ex make explosions in the oil, it makes uh, it eruptions. It's pretty cool too. I think you suffocate in oil a lot faster than the water. Actually, doesn't really how it works, but whatever. It just makes it more dangerous. So it's interesting. Hey, Parker. Do you interrupt me? Is that what you're gonna do? Yes, you are. Ow! If you're too close to that explosion, it does hurt you. You'll be hurt. I'm suffocating. Let's get it. Ow! So you gotta be careful with that. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, it's a little hint that you need explosion to uh, kill that thing. It's, it's like one of those, you know, just in time to control. Like I said, a video or two ago. Turn around, bro. No, Parker, 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 please. I have enough allergy issues today, alright? Get, get. There you go. I've successfully gotten him scared of the. He was always scared of the Grinkleys with the aluminum foil. But he still jumped up here. He just, you know. I've set up this mission to specifically to just see with the removed weapon. And the one from those dumb rabbits that never blows up where I want it to! Boki gets it. Boki gets it. It's a very potent weapon if used correctly. Remember to detonate with the kick button. Boki gets it so much. So hard. Oh, it's a carrot! I just noticed that. It's a freaking carrot. Alright, so let me guess we can shoot through this one. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so we're still in, like, quiet... I really like when games do this. Like, it's like a soft tutorial where... Soft tutorial where you. Ooh, it's not too bad. Um, it, it's the way, it's not even like. Most people probably wouldn't even consider it like a tutorial. It's just teaching you as you go along, giving you the skills you need as you need them instead of, you know, oh, that's that, that hurts? The, the freaking equalizer bars hurt? It lets you not get overwhelmed and introduce new mechanics, you know, at a reasonable pace. You know, you shouldn't just throw everything the player at once anyway. But it also lets you, uh, you know, I find it a lot more effective than those tutorials. Are those evil teddy bears? Those sure are evil teddy bears. Okay. Um, it's just way better than, you know, those that kind of tutorial that, like, it blows a thi a thousand, th a thousand, a thousand things in your mind, like, on, you know, second one of your playing experience, and then you don't use half of them for, you know, half of the freaking game, and then there's no new tutorial. There's no, uh, you know, second tutorial when you actually need those things. You know, the game just assumes you remember from that tutorial, you know, an hour ago, two hours ago, ten hours ago. Uh, this is a game called Crescent Pale Mist that I played a lot of time. It's more of a show with us, if anything else, but, um, I really like the, the movement and the combat in it, but there's this part where, so the tutorial teaches that you can teleport to daggers. Uh, there's absolutely no reason really to do so uh, in the tutorial, and the game never really explains to you why you would ever want to do that. Uh, it turns out, like, four levels in, at least an hour from the tutorial, uh, when you've never used the dagger teleportation thing, you suddenly need to do it to solve a puzzle that the tutorial never taught you how to do. Like, you're about to enter a large facility of some sort. Be on your guard, things are going to be getting more dangerous from now on. So, more death trap and explosions, Mia? Yeah. Precisely. And remember, hazards affect enemies too. Mastering your environment can give them quite the edge in combat. But yeah, it, Like, usually, say, let's look at how Kirby tends to do things. Walk behind spikes, but don't land on them. Oh, that is awesome! See, that's what I'm talking about with those tutorials. You know, the just in time. So yeah, you can walk. Oh, there's so few games that do spikes like reasonably. Like, I really don't like it when you can just walk into the edge of a spike, like the straight up flat blunt part of a spike, and you just explode. Um, you should really at least like Mega Man games usually have the decency to make you know side like edge spikes that like point out. You know, they'd be pointing out to the right here. And wait, the flame palace and then it's expired? Alright. Um you know, Mega Man games, you know, they do it that way where um Yes I do Parker. No, get the thing! Oh, definitely dip swapping the remote for this. Not bad. What do you mean immune? 
You need to throw a dagger through this barrier that you it stops you but not daggers. But I mean why would you even think to use a dagger? Like, you've never used a dagger before to teleport like this, or you probably have it it's been useless. And it's just suddenly the only way to go. And it's not like it's not like this is a completely linear game where it's like obvious that you need to do something to get past. Uh, this isn't a level full of things like hidden keys and you need to defeat all of these to progress, stuff like that. And so you just think, oh, I, I need to go back, you know, backtrack, and there's some, there's something I missed. I, I do not like this boss. I don't like needing to use the boat armor. But, um, so, there's just no way, I was not thinking about using the dagger at all. Even if I had remembered that, you know, the dagger even does that. Dang, the, the, the low health warnings worked really well into the music. Okay, just need to, uh, it's actually a first step. Uh, I think I just need to pile them up in the uh, corner. Of this guy. Yeah, so I had to look up the kind of guide to figure out what the, uh, what the solution to that was. See, I can do the damage to it. That, huh? Only pile these up in there. Huh? Oh, that was dead enough to it. I can only place like two before it, you know, does not damage. That's just a I think I have a plan. Yeah, I'm trying to. So, with Kirby games and like. Most Nintendo platforms, when they teach you a new hazard, uh, it's like in World 1 1. You remember in World 1 1 in Mario, uh, the very first pit in the game, uh, there's no. there's blocks, so if you fall in the pit, you can just jump out. And then the very next pit actually has death, so you learn how to, you know, avoid jumping into the pit before it'll actually kill you. And, you know, Kirby games tend to do something like this too, where, like, uh, say. On screen one, you know, there's something you need to like, say you need to cut a thing with cutter, and then you'll get like a normal item. Then on the next screen over, there'll be a slightly more tricky version of that puzzle, and then it'll actually give you, you know, a treasure chest or something. So the bad guys are gonna have an actual secret lab? That's how I know they're evil. Well, I'd say it more has to do with the fact that they're synthesizing extremely dangerous chemical weapons there. And besides, I have a secret lab. What does that make me? I mean, everybody has a secret lab. Don't you guys have secret labs? It makes you a huge nerd, meow. Oh. Fighting like I don't even know. We're fighting like 50s Buzz Light Years in Monaco. You better have a power. Oh, yeah, he has, I think he has tornado. Or is that just a thief? Yes, that is a thief. Whoa, chemical? Toss exploding class. Toss more for a bigger explosion. Oh, cool! Okay, I guess that was worth it. Yeah, if you haven't noticed the low health warning in this game, it's just a second track layered on top of the music with perfect timing and everything. So this flask thing is very nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. This is so this is what a real like solo use weapon should look like. I love that rainbow. So of course I find this weapon on the stream where I'm trying to show off what it looks like without the you know full blown crazy visual effects. As you can see, it's a lot more subdued in the background. It looks like a Metroid background at this point. So that's just that's mostly just because of the tubes and stuff. This is the least annoying, like, this is the best example I've ever seen of a game doing the, uh, uh, the 
low health. Did you just spawn there? Let's get that health after I no longer need it. Volatile. What's all the oil in this place anyway? I think it really uses fuel anymore, right? Well, that may be true on Asnadia, since we have access to abundant wind and nuclear power. There's so many uses for combustible fuels. Yeah, like using it to blow up my enemies. Just make sure you don't blow yourself up in the process, Boogie. No process. I am playing. Oh, uh oh. Let me guess. Let me guess. Yep. Nice. Oh, you can fire the bolts underwater. So if they hit the surface of the water, they pop, or they, you know, they explode. But if you fire underwater, they're still safe until they, they actually land on something. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm getting the hang of this stupid uh, bolt or remote thing. job of teaching you new stuff like slowly. And it does, you know, it has some text tutorials which isn't always uh, I mean sometimes you need, you know, I hear sometimes like people say, oh it's you need to teach 100 percent through game design. It's not always entirely possible to teach people without words. And I don't think as long as you keep your words to a minimum, like this game tends to use like a single text box. Or maybe some explanatory text that's like, you know, basically a story element. I, I don't think that's too objectionable. You know, depending on how complex your controls are, or depending on how complex what you need to express is, sometimes you just need words. That's not really, you know, necessarily a fault. I like the I like when games have like little randomized like um, variations on UI text. Like uh, this is something that Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival does decently well. They, they have like a whole bunch of different ways to say some of the most common like, oh hey, has everybody played this game before? You know, there's a bunch of different variations on that, and there's even variations on how you can respond to that answer. They, you know, they obviously both are yes and no, but you know, it's like sometimes it's yep, sometimes it's nope, sometimes no. What's this? Um, it's just more summons. The summons seem really bad. But this one is legit, this uh, exploding thing. Well, not exploding things. Those are my own little dudes. Oh, wait, no, they're not. That, I think that was one was a real one. Whatever, this is the last target. Alright. Invincible Legion. Invincible? Oh, they, they really are invincible. Okay. So it, it really is just to seek out the target mission. It's like a more hardcore version of those final targets. What is this? Shadow Metal? You're indestructible, go break stuff. Oh, you break spikes? Holy crap, that is sweet. Destroy. Oh, this is really cool. Oh, it's over. So it always feels really powerful when the game gives you a way to, uh, you know, you, you know, you learn that this thing is like a one-hit kill, indestructible hazard, and then the game gives you the tools to, you know, break through it or whatever. But it's still over here. It's invincible. Isn't there just more? Oh. A little confused. Can I just try this one? Now I am. Can't jump back down. The specific ones are invincible, I guess. Last one. Oh. oh! I thought the frog was my target, not that thing. That makes more sense. Alright. See, that's what I mean about that. I stopped being able to hear it, but. The no health. Or the low health warnings. It, it's a second musical track layered on top. I really like that. I'm surprised that I don't think I've ever seen that done before. That's really cool. What's this? Oh! See, now that's a that 
You know, I was talking about how sometimes you do need words, but that's actually... That's a really good way to teach people, you know, you just give that arrow, and people are probably figured it out. But it also has a text one in case you don't. So I, I really like how they do that. I... This game has some of the best tutorials I've seen, honestly. On, I should, like, do an article, like, right up. Power kick! Oh, sweet! I really like when games have, you know, these... Uh, I hate to call it a gimmick, but it kind of is. Like, gimmick is not... Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. But I really like when platformers have, like, a new gimmick for every level. Like, Yoshi's Island was like that. I think it's a, a key to a really strong platform. Like, DKC Tropical Freeze does that, too. Like... It's kind of the key, like, because that way you get, you know, it gives you so much variety and, like, there's a new mechanic to learn every new level, and it's so refreshing. Yoshi's Island really doesn't get enough credit. I mean, a, a lot of people realize it's fantastic, but a lot, Super Mario World seems to get a lot more love, and, well, I do like World, you know, it's a great game, too, but, um, it doesn't... Yoshi's Island doesn't get enough credit for the, like almost every level has something like totally new and interesting in it. A new enemy. There's a lot of enemies that are only in the individual like single levels. And you know, Mario World, great game, but it had a lot more you know fillery levels. You know, just combinations of stuff you've already seen, and it's a little less interesting. Than, uh, I don't think I was supposed to let that guy out. And Yoshi's Island gets criticized for its length, but it's like every single level is so dense and interesting and has, you know, everything is always new. What is that? Explosion, okay. Mario World's great too, but uh, it doesn't have that everything is new feeling to it. It doesn't. I enjoy it, but it doesn't do as much for me. Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island is just. Personally, I find that, um... Okay, how do I even get to... Oh. Personally, I find both Super Mario 3 and Yoshi's Island are better than the world, personally. I'm gonna make so many people angry, but whatever. The world just does not have as much going on for it as either of those do. It's kind of visually, it's just kind of there. It's just kind of... Mario Bros. 3 is like... Compare Mario Bros. 3 to, to Mario Bros. 1. It's like, wow. I think these are on the same system. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's honestly, you know... Mario Bros. 1 is like an okay NES game graphically. Um, and then SMB3 is like one of the best. And then along with... I think Wario Woods is supposed to be pretty good, and definitely uh, Kirby's Adventure, one of my favorites on the NES period. There's just so many weird colors and stuff. Like, SMB1 doesn't look bad. I guess for a, an early NES game, it looked like one of the best ones, but then SMB3 comes along and you're like, oh dang, that's gonna look like that? Like, like Mario's yellow. Like, why, is, why was he yellow? Like, there's no technical reason for him to be yellow. The exit, the exit to this chemical plant is just beyond this room. From there, it's a direct path to the factory. That means I have something big guarding the exit then. Here we go again. Alright, I do think it's interesting that, like, the, the bosses basically have the same ability as you. It's good that they, you know... I actually really like the stomping, but the best game with stomping damage in it is uh, Bunny Must Die, because you uh, you can choose whether or not you want to bounce high off of an enemy, so you can just bounce like a ton of times in like just one second, so you, you, you can do crazy damage. In this, it's you know, pretty limited, so you're always bouncing back up. And Bunny Must Die, bouncing is meant to be a pretty significant source of damage. In this game, not so much. Because this game is more about the kicks and your powers. But, uh, 
I've seen some very few games do what Money Must Die does in terms of, uh, you know, the bouncing man, which I really like. Well, I don't know. Get, get the shot where I can hurt you, please. It's supposed to just, like, float around in the world. Oh, gosh. There you go. Better. Okay, drop health. What is this? Chemical, like, mega chemical? Okay, I really want the health, but he's like crunching. Okay. Nice. I really like that you get to throw back like one of their best weapons at them in the boss fights. That's really cool. They activated the self-destruct. You out is there? Up. Oh, there's an exit to the right. Hurry. Oh, I think that was a cutscene. I was trying to control that, and it felt delayed, so... Yeah, it was actually a cutscene. The Entenama has escaped underground. Barricade the tunnels immediately. Look at this murder disco text box. That's intense. Do not allow her to reach the facility. Alright, so I assume this is World 4? Yeah, World 4, the underground. So yeah, I guess we'll continue in another video. Layer to descend. All right. So yeah, this once again this is Copy Kitty, and next episode I'll be I'll be putting back the effects on you know medium intensity. I don't think I'll put them on max. Wait, but if you want to play them on max, maybe I'll show like one level with the max settings later on. But uh, for now, the medium level effects seem pretty good for me.